Today I'm pumping. I'm gonna pump and I'm pumping up my legs. I'm doing a pump pre-fatigue to get the quads and the hamstrings feeling extra juicy. Because when they're juicy and then you go lift weights, man, that's a killer combo. <laughs> <laughs> Pre-fatigues show up frequently inside of Persist training tracks. In the fitness world, the most frequent mistake I see is improper warm-up and preparation. Without proper prep, you're going to be at a higher risk for injury. And you're also not going to get the most effective training session in. So we want to put your time in the gym to good use. Pre-fatigues are a simple and effective approach to increasing blood flow to the target tissues. This is gonna help also get your nervous system firing adequately. That way you can increase your mind-muscle connection. Meanwhile, you're also gonna be warming up your joints and getting them sliding smoothly. Most often we accomplish this with simple joint and muscle-specific contractions. Either higher reps, slower tempos, or abbreviated ranges of motion that specifically address the muscles at hand. Today, I'm gonna to be using a variety of different machines that allow me to thoroughly prep for a big leg day ahead without taking up a ton of time. So go ahead, stick around and see how I substitute out body weight or low equipment variations for all of these classic machine-based exercises that you're gonna see. I'm not programming machines into trainings, into persistent training programs yet. Partly because um, still the vast majority of our audience members and our customers, our subscribers, probably don't have access to this type of stuff. But the beauty of what we're, what we have with these machines, and what I know from training is that I have a scale or a regression or a substitution with basic, you know, uh, tools that every, you know micro gym or functional fitness gym has. So it could be a band, it could be a dumbbell, it could be a bench, it could be a box, something like that. We'll, we can recreate these things. So um, I'm taking advantage of having these um, and sometimes, you know, the control that I can get from having a machine is, uh, allows me to achieve what I'm, what I'm chasing in the training. So like in this situation where I'm just trying to get this pre-fatigue, this little pump going on before I go and do some compound lifts, I'm really just trying to focus on muscle contractions. Like I don't really care so much about, you know, the balance, the coordination, like, you know, the motor control of the whole thing. Like I, I'm about to do this thrust on this hip thruster machine. I just want to squeeze my butt and just get my butt, you know, contracting and get the muscles filled up with blood. So that's what we're doing. So for those inner thigh, the inner thigh, the adduction machine, you can do a Copenhagen raise, which is basically just put my knee, a straight leg or a bent leg, and I'm recreating that same motion. And if you want to add weight, that's when you just make the lever a little bit longer. And that's going to make it feel harder. The other way I can do the, the Audi machine or abduction, you can do a clamshell plank thrust like that working this leg or throw it up here again it's kind of like the same thing in reverse to that last exercise so 
whether you have a machine or not, you can still get the pre-fatigue going just using this. Then of course there's the hip thrust, which you don't need a machine. You can just put a barbell or a sandbag, a heavy sandbag or a dumbbell right here. Easy enough. I wasn't doing very much weight. I was doing 45 pounds over there. And let's see. Oh yeah. The quad, the quad extension, the leg extension, this one. So basically, this is all I'm focused on contracting. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a ton of load, but you still get a good quad extension, leg extension, quad pump. And I can show you how to make it more loaded with a band. Honestly, it's just getting a little creativity in what you're doing. So put a little tension behind my knees and now I'm contracting against the band tension. So that's your leg extension. And then how about hamstring curls? Throw this around the post. Walk your feet in, loop the heels around, and now here I go. Boom. Uh, 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 uh. Same idea. So you don't need you don't need ten thousand dollars worth of gym equipment and machines if you don't want to. You can go with these things, but if you have access to this stuff. It's fantastic as well. Oh, I gotta show you the calf raise. So you can take a, something simple like this. All you need is like a little step, something like a little bit, like, like that. And then, boom, imagine I have two dumbbells just sitting here, one dumbbell on my knees, and I'm doing seated calf raises, right? Again, you don't need a calf raise machine. I mean, it's just a total perk of having a gym where you have this type of equipment. If it's there, great, go use it because it's really some really good measurable loads that you can put on. You can track the weight going up and down. There's no setup. So, you know, you're like feeling a little lazy when I get into the gym and I'm using this pre-fatigue pump to kind of wake up my body, get me going. I'm kind of, I don't want to drag all this stuff out. I just want to get on the machine. It's one of the benefits of it. So, hey figure out how to get it done we have options for you but I literally just showed you one two three four five six six different options with just equipment that everybody's got a bench a plate a band that's it okay we're gonna keep pumping All right, hey, I hope you got some good nuggets out of this pre-fatigue and man vs. machine episode. If you liked what you saw, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see next. Take care.